every day they're trying so desperately to spin their way out of this. But, the, you know, we've talked about this, Lindsay. They did this, oh, don't come, but come. Yeah. You know, they said don't come, but they're nodding their heads. They're like, hey, if you show up, here are all these benefits that you're going to get. They show up literally wearing the T-shirts, begging Biden to let them in. And then we wonder why we have this huge crisis. It's, I mean, I, it, it blows my mind. And here's the other thing. We talk about this all the time. The media is literally bending themselves in a pretzel to cover for them in this. They are. Uh, but they're not going to be able to ignore it much longer, Sean, because even on Monday, 32 unaccompanied children on Monday, as yeah. yesterday, were at the border. All right. Well, we are now joined by, as I mentioned just a moment ago, somebody who has been to the border and witnessed firsthand what's happening, Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn. Senator, welcome back to the show. Good to be with you, and you're exactly right. It is a humanitarian crisis that is at our southern border, and the fact that you have a DHS secretary who last week would not admit that this was a crisis. When they have known this was happening, they saw that people heard what Biden said and then said, we are going because he will not deport us if we go. And now, you have an untenable situation developing at the southern border. Senator Blackburn, how much longer can the Biden administration put up this front and act like this is a challenge, we're trying to do the right thing, without addressing it how it should be? Well, and Lindsay, the thing is, now they're calling for the volunteer force to come down and help them with all the humanitarian needs there at the southern border. They can no longer say that this is not a crisis, that they have not mismanaged this situation, and they can no longer say, we didn't cause this, it just happened. Because you're hearing from people coming to the border that they heard the president's remarks, and therefore they came to the border. When you have the DHS secretary and the president's spokesperson going out here and saying, don't come now, just wait, don't come now. What they're saying is, we will allow you to illegally come. This is saying, we will allow you to break the law. And what they're doing is, you're hearing from the mayors on the border, you're hearing from the governors, they cannot handle this influx. Yeah. COVID coming into the country through these that are illegally entering the country. These individuals getting on buses, getting on planes, going to other places in the country. This is something that people are saying, and it's not a partisan issue. It is something that our citizens are saying, what is going on? When you open the border like this, what we have learned is every town in this country becomes a border town. Yes. Every state becomes a border state because of the impact that the narco terrorists, that the drug cartels, the human trafficking cartels, mm -hmm. the sex trafficking cartels, and the gangs have on the communities that are going to be adversely impacted. I think it's so important that you explain it that way for people to understand this is impacting our country, not just these border states. Yeah. I want to ask you this before we go. I don't mean to jam you on this, but I know that you recently sent a letter to NBA Commissioner Adam Silver yeah. talking about the NBA's ties to China. There are now calls with how China is handling the Uyghur Muslims for us to boycott the Winter Olympics in 2022, which are slated to be in Beijing, China. Do you think that Team USA should be a part of those Olympics? I do not think Team USA should be a part of those Olympics. If we have to have and plan and execute the uh, alternative Olympic Games for countries that stand against the human rights violations and the genocide that is happening in China, people that stand against the great power competition, the Belt and Road Initiative, and the debt diplomacy that China is carrying out. Countries that stand against China practicing rob, replicate, and replace, stealing intellectual property of our innovators, making it at a cheaper, lower price, and then replacing these companies in the in the consumer supply lines and our critical supply lines, we should all come together and do something to show China we are not going to aid them in their push to be 
at a point of global dominance during the 21st century. You know, I hope we get more senators like you that are willing to stand up to China and fight for the future of this country. It's a shame that you have to be known as a leader in this. And I mean that respectfully because you have been out front warning the American people about what's going on. And I wish more of your colleagues would heed the warning that you are putting out there. Um, Senator, as always, thank you for coming on. Thanks for the fight that you are taking to the Chinese and standing for America. And I, I hope we can have you back soon to continue the discussion about what you're doing. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Sean. Bye-bye now. You hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest-growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.